Good afternoon, everyone. It's a real honor to uh, actually be following Gary. Uh, I'm going to be doing a bit of a different uh, cut, though, on uh, the, the landscape of Vision APIs. I'm not going to be deep diving into any one. I'm going to be doing like a landscape overview, uh, seeing how the different APIs interrelate to each other and looking at the most significant characteristics of each one, hopefully giving uh, you guys the chance to uh, figure out which ones will be more uh, interesting for you to explore further. And for the purposes of this presentation, I'm kind of focusing on the APIs that allow access to uh, hardware acceleration. So I figured I'd start there. Different types of hardware accelerator, GPUs, FPGAs, DSPs, and dedicated hardware uh, that are relevant to the embedded vision space. Let's kind of look at the different APIs and see how they let you access uh, these different uh, processor types. So lots of the acceleration APIs out there actually started uh, driving GPUs and started life as 3D graphics uh, APIs, but they've become more relevant to the vision processing community uh, as they've become more programmable. Shaders uh, let you write programs that can process images and uh, vision streams and uh, accelerate those on, on the GPU hardware. We have the traditional. Uh, APIs like OpenGL, OpenGL ES. OpenGL is an architecture now that's been around almost 25 years. We have new generation uh, APIs, Vulkan, uh, for, which is from Kronos, and Metal uh, from Apple. And we're going to be covering not just Kronos APIs uh, here in this presentation, uh, though we will have a little bit more detail on some of the Kronos APIs because open standards. Um, but the new generation APIs, will compare and contrast them uh, to the older style uh, GP APIs. There are some low-level uh, compute APIs. OpenCL is the open standard uh, from Kronos in that space. Uh, so G for graphics, C for compute. Again, the programmer is getting low-level access to the hardware, writing explicit kernels or shaders um, to run uh, on the hardware. OpenCL is quite different to OpenGL. Uh, OpenGL is really just for GPUs. OpenCL is for heterogeneous compute. So you can accelerate OpenCL programs on a GPU, but you can also access hardware such as FPGAs and uh, DSPs. If you click up a level, another compute-oriented framework is CUDA from NVIDIA. Um, CUDA takes a different approach. It's slightly higher level than OpenCL. It takes a language, C or C++, and puts some additions into the language to let a programmer who's familiar with C or C++ uh, easily carve out some part of his code to offload uh, onto a GPU. CUDA is pretty focused on uh, GPU acceleration. We now have something that's kind of similar in terms of programming style to CUDA with Sickle, uh, which is a Kronos API that builds on top of OpenCL and through OpenCL can go out to the different heterogeneous processor types, which also takes a language approach, a C++ based language approach uh, for parallel programming, uh, for vision and other applications uh, that I'll go through in, in just a second. Then going up a level again, we have the vision frameworks. These are the frameworks that come pre-packaged with a, a, a bunch of uh, vision uh, functionality. We've just heard about OpenCV uh, from, from the, the father of OpenCV. Uh, the uh, open standard, not equivalent, it's different, they complement each other, uh, but a vision framework is OpenVX. OpenVX is a spec, whereas OpenCV is a uh, body of open source. OpenVX is intended to enable a vision uh, algorithm to be expressed, to be run with pretty good performance portability across a great range of hardware. So you can go to CUDA. Some people use op OpenCL to accelerate OpenVX, but you can go directly to DSP. You can even go directly to hardware, and I'll explain uh, how that works. And last but not least, I'm not going to go into too much detail on these. They're kind of higher level libraries rather than APIs, but I thought I'd kind of put them in to see how everything kind of relates, because neural nets, obviously, the big theme here uh, at the summit. Um, typically, the libraries that are used by neural nets are in turn accelerated by one of these lower level APIs. So if you're in the CUDA ecosystem, QDNN is like a linear algebra library, but it's been specifically 
optimized for neural net acceleration, runs on top of uh, the CUDA. And then CLBLAS is, is a linear algebra library that runs on top of uh, OpenCL. And they were uh, typically the libraries that you'd use for accelerating the convolutions and other uh, functions that you need for an accelerated neural net.